I'm going to do a Coulomb's Law example in two dimensions. And I'll call this one A because I expect to do at least one and, and maybe a couple more of this type of example. And so in this case, we have a, uh, a system of three charges. But over here, on, here's a plus x axis, plus y. And my three, I'm going to have a charge at the origin, which I'll call Q1. Uh, charge uh, along the y-axis, which I'll call Q2, and a charge along the x-axis, which I'll call Q3. And so uh, Q1 is uh, equal to um, 1 microcoulomb, and it sits at the origin. Q2 is equal to uh, negative 2 microcoulomb, and it sits at a position 0 and then uh, 0.2. We're all in SI units, so that's 0.2 meters. And then Q3 has a 3 microcoulomb charge, which sits uh, at 0.4 meters along the x-axis. Okay, and so in, in this approach, I'm going to uh, and I want to know what is the force on Q3. Okay, so it, sort of the, the most general mathematical expression for this, if I were to write that down, the, the uh, total force then is equal to the sum of all the individual forces, which a vector sum, which I identify by sub i. And so uh, according to Coulomb's law then, that's going to be the sum over all of the other charges, and so I want the charge on 3. So for all i not equal to 3, and that's how I sort of identify this, I'm going to sum over all the i's except 3. The uh, Coulomb's constant times the charge of uh, whatever the ith charge is times the charge of 3 divided by um, the distance between the ith charge and 3 squared, and then times a unit vector of the vector from the ith charge to charge 3. So to solve this, I need to find all the terms and then uh, the appropriate vectors. Okay, so let's, let's first expand this out. And so we only have two terms here. So we have k q1 q3 over r1 3 squared r1 3 hat. This is the distance between the squared and the unit vector. Plus Coulomb's constant times q2 q3, the distance between 2 and 3 squared, and then the unit vector pointing from 2 to 3. So to solve this, we need to find these vectors, r1 and r13 and r23. Okay, so r13 is the vector that points from 1 to 3. Okay, so that's this vector right here. I know that the distance between 1 and 3 is 0.4 meters, and the vector from 1 to 3 is in the positive x direction, so this vector is going to be 0 0.4 uh, i-hat. Okay. That's straightforward enough. From that I can calculate its magnitude, which is just 0 0.4 meters again, I'm in SI, and then the unit vector from 1 to 3 is just the uh, x unit vector, I had. Great. Uh, so that's enough. Uh, the vector from 2 to 3 is not quite as straightforward. So the vector from 2 to 3 is this one right here. And so what is that vector? Well, I, I, I know the I can figure out its components. That's 0.4 meters, and that's 0.2 meters. So I just need to find the components of this vector on the Cartesian coordinate system. So along the x-axis, if I were to break this into components here, of course the exponent is just uh, 0 0.4, 0, 
point for i hat. And now the y component, which is uh, pointing down, then is going to be negative 0 0.2 j hat. All right, so that's the uh, that's the um, the vector. So I can calculate the magnitude. The magnitude of this vector is the square root of 0.4 squared plus 0.2 squared, and I put that in my calculator, and I get 0 0.4472. I'm going to keep some four, at least four significant figures now, and I'll reduce it later. Okay, so now that I have the magnitude, I can calculate the unit vector, the, the unit vector that points in the direction from 2 to 3, and that's equal to the vector from 2 to 3 divided by its magnitude. Okay, So that's equal to, if I plug this in, here's the 0.4 divided by 0 0.4472 i hat minus 0.2 divided by 0.4472 j hat. You'll see what's happening. So here's this component divided by the magnitude and then this component divided by the magnitude again. So now I just uh, go ahead and compute those in the calculator again and I get um, I'm going to run out of room here, so bring it down here. It's equal to 0.8944 i hat minus 0.4472 j hat. Okay, so I have um, I have the uh, the the full form of Coulomb's law for bo both charges here. I found then the vector from each charge that exerts a force on 3, the vector from that charge to charge 3. I calculated the magnitude of each of those, then I calculated the unit vector of each of those, and now I can substitute all of that back into here. So, um, how how am I going to do that? Well, so the first thing I'm going to do just to try to simplify some of my algebra is I'm going to factor out. Let's let's use this. A factor out a k and a q3 from both of those terms. Maybe this will simplify what I have. Okay. So I have uh, nine times ten to the nine and q3 was 3 times 10 to the minus 6 and so that's equal to then I have uh, Q1 which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by the magnitude um, R1 to 3 squared so that's 0.4 squared and then the unit vector, 1 to 3, and that's i hat. Okay. Plus, and so I've already factored out the k and the q3. So q2, which is in this case negative 2 times 10 to the minus 6. These are all vectors, so we've got to keep all the minus signs here. The vectors are, are telling us the directions. And then the uh, magnitude of the vector from 2 to 3, which I calculated here. So that's 0.4472 squared. I probably didn't have to take the square root here and square it again then if I'd, if I'd thought ahead, but that's fine. Um, and now, so that's, a, that's charge 2. I've got charge 2. I've got the uh, R23 squared, the magnitude, and now I, I just need the unit vector pointing from charge 2 to 3, which is right here. So that's 0.8944 i hat minus 0.4472 j hat.
Okay, and then uh, another parenthesis there. And now it's just a matter of, of doing the algebra. So this up here, uh, you know, I'm going to factor out another factor of 10 to the 6 here just to make my algebra uh, look nicer, my arithmetic really. So this becomes 27 times 10 to the minus 3. And now I have 1 divided by 0.4 squared which is 6.25 i hat plus uh, negative 2 divided by this thing squared um, times 0.8944 and that turns out to be, and then I'll need a, it's minus, so minus 8 point, sorry, uh, right, 8.944 i hat. If I just calculate 2 divided by this thing times that, I get 8.944, and then now I have this term, so negative 0.4472 times this up front, and that gives me a positive 4.472 j hat. So I just distributive property, making sure I keep all my vector components separate. Now I can combine these all under the all with the i hat unit vector, and so this is negative two. 0.694 i hat plus 4.472 j hat all times 0 0.0273 and finally finally I get negative 0 0.0727 i hat plus 0.121 j hat it's force si Newtons. And there's the final force in component form.